cancelled. Sweezy. It's time for another wonderful segment of uh, Scraping the Bottom of the Barrel, where um, I go to BuzzFeed and I go over an article. Um, we call it Scraping the Bottom of the Barrel because uh, we are making low-tier content right now. Um, and um, am I ashamed of it? Pro- I should be, but I don't really care, to be honest. When you give a fuck about things, I don't know. That's a whole long story. Anyways, we're going through this article. So last week, apparently, I talked about how much I hated women. And uh, Micah called me out and said that uh, fragile masculinity, uh, I did not call that out and solve that problem. Here on a show where I talk about porn and a woman with two vaginas and a pastor who farts on uh, faces of people. Uh, I did not solve, uh, fragile masculinity. So maybe this will make up for it. Um, this is from Buzzfeed. Uh, we got like 25 of these topics. Uh, men are sharing the telltale signs that a guy is insecure in his masculinity and it's too accurate. So let's first, let's just go with me first. Am I, I have fragile masculinity. I don't think so. I've always been kind of a, like a sissy. I think I told a story like I was almost hired at like a floral like shop in a grocery store or whatever. And the guy told the manager of that area, it's like, he's very in touch with his feminine side. And so, so that's how I am. I would say like 60% masculine, 40% feminine. Um, I'm dirty like a man, but apparently I clean myself like a woman and take care of myself like a woman. Fellas, is it gay to clean your ass is a question we've asked on the show before. And uh, let's just go into it. So am I, do I have fragile masculinity? Um, No, because I'm barely masculine. So can't have, can't have something you don't have. That was, that was a stupid fucking sentence I just said. Okay. Number one, constant attempts to one up anything and anyone at any time. Um, Is that a man thing? Because, you know, I kind of. Me, me and Micah do that, but we're not. Is that a, I feel like, can't women do that too? One up each other? That's called having parent issues, honestly. Um, sibling issues, honestly. Um, I do that, but I don't think it's like a masculine problem. I just assume everyone does that. Maybe I am wrong. I've known to be wrong at some times. Um, I used to think Bill Cosby was a good person. Uh, I was wrong, and I'm willing to admit that now I am wrong. So, uh, so is one-upping someone, is that too masculine? Maybe I need to rethink that, like one-up each other. Um, I just think I'm a hater, and uh, I, I'm, I'm better than other people. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm just too, I'm, maybe I'm just better than everyone else. Um, all right, let's go to number two. People online who post cringy graphics of a lion or the Joker with an equally cringy quote next to it saying something like, followers work for others. The alpha works for himself with some dollar signs next to it. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be going through this topic a lot. If you call yourself an alpha, um, you're probably a beta. <laughs> I would never call myself an alpha. I would only call myself an alpha of a one-man wolf pack. I work for myself alone, and I don't have followers. I don't let people follow me. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm the leader. I'm my own leader. And I'm the leader of no one, but I'm the leader of myself. Maybe that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I do enjoy leading things, but at the same time, like sometimes just following someone's easier because then you just don't do anything. Um, yeah, but if you use the word alpha, yeah, you're probably, um, you, you shouldn't breed. If you use the word alpha, you shouldn't breed. People were like, I listen to Joe Rogan experience. Joe Rogan doesn't talk about that shit, okay? I listen to Joe Rogan sometimes when I like the guests. And uh, I can guarantee you he just sometimes talks about drugs. The drug stuff is all honestly true. Like, that stuff is not made up. But, uh, I know, we gotta be an alpha male. I gotta hunt. Elk. He likes hunting hunting elk. Why are we talking shit on Joe Rogan? Like, I like how, like, I'm, like, defending Joe Rogan. Like, he can defend him fucking self. (laughs) But, uh, oh, but there's, yeah, I do get the, he has those types of followers. Um, where I really think they're just UFC fans. And then UFC fans listening to a guy talk to Elon Musk about shit and getting high. Um, 
Number three, he's middle-aged but constantly shares photos of himself in his prime, like from his old football team or his military uniform, etc. Okay, well, like throwback Thursday's fun for everyone. I'm not sure if I can get on board with this. Um, I think there's another art part of this, but like, if you're trying to just share glory days, like, wish I could go back, you know, back in my deck, throw pigskin over them mountains. I tell you what. <laughs> If you don't get that reference, you may be too young for the show. To be honest, you may be too young. It's from Napoleon Dynamite, FYI. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, the football thing's weird uh, or stuff like that. Like, I don't know, if I was, like, 50 and I try to talk about the music I made right now, that'd be pretty cringy. But like, back in my day, I used to make make that shit. Make that song called Oof, and, you know, it was like, if you don't want me, then I don't want you. Actually, yeah, that like EP's out now on uh, Spotify, wherever you get your music at. Um I just assume most people have Spotify. Um, stream that shit. Um, middle-aged man. But yeah, if you're middle-aged, there was a guy, he announced the basketball games in my high school, and he had like a 1964, I want to say, Letterman's jacket, and he already still wore it. I don't know. I mean, he was a nice guy. I, I mean, I, I mean, I got to hung out with him a little bit. He's a cool guy, but at the same time, it's like, you're still wearing that shit? <laughs> cool dude, though, so... Calm your tits, people. I like them. I just thought it was weird. But there's a lot of problems I have with a lot of people. Like Micah. I was going to say Josh, but this is a Josh-positive episode of Cancel Shweezy. So we're not talking shit about Josh. Just Micah. Because Micah's fucking weird. Um, Number four. Man, we got a lot to go through. I am just fucking dragging out. Uh, I'm about to be 27. I still see an ex-football player posting his highlight videos and stat sheets from high school. He'll post himself working out and caption it with, I still run shit here. Uh, just can't let the glory days go. That's why I'm so happy I didn't do sports in high school. I mean, I did band and choir in high school, and I enjoyed it, but like... The nice thing about that is I'm not fucking posting any of those videos, like, of me playing back then. I, I even have videos of me playing guitar back then, and I'm like, I'm going to unlist this shit <laughs> now, because um, this sucks. But, like, if you had to, if you saw me posting shit like, this is my high school marching band uh, performance from 2012, no, 2000, I was out of high school in 2012, 2011, um... Here's here's a little video of us. Uh, oh, we did Hey Jude. Oh man, we did Hey Jude in high school, and uh, basically, so in the, in the actual song Hey Jude, uh, at the end of the song, uh, John Lennon has a stroke. He's like Jude, 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 Jude. Wow, wow. Basically like that, screaming out loud. And uh, I think I was playing in like the pit. Like I was playing like marimba or some shit. Um, Basically, we did Hey Jude, and then there was the part like, na, 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 na. That's before the, the stroke starts. And uh, so, when you know, when you're in rehearsal, you're doing this, like, every day for, like, three months, um, you goof around a lot. And if it was funny, the band directors would let you get away with it. And so, <laughs> that's, a, that's a key thing. Sometimes, you can get away with goofing off if it's funny. Um, and so, you know, just during like performances and then like, no, 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 hey, Jude. And I would just be yelling out, Jude, 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 wow. And I was just like screaming it. And, uh, and so like basically, you know, just goofing off during that. And so, and so basically one day, uh, our three drum majors and the music teachers circled around me. They're like, hey, we want you to do that during the actual performances. I'm like. All right, because <laughs> so like we did it at actual performances, and I think we did our one competition because for some reason we only did one competition. Um, and my dad was there. My mom, I think she was the volleyball coach at the time, so she couldn't make it. So my dad was like, "I'll show up." Like I cared that they showed up to watch me play music, um, and uh, I was like, you know, the people watching were really into that. <laughs> things that was also the same day i think he bartered down a pair he forgot his sunglasses at home uh and like he needed he wanted a new pair and so he bartered a salesman down <laughs> prices that's dad shit for you anyways so um yeah do not post about your glory days in high school uh talk about them on a podcast um but only if they're only if it's funny and remember you can get away with anything as long as it's funny kill someone make it funny because then 
you'll get away with it. <laughs> okay, I need more wine, folks. Oh boy, we're only on. Oh man, we're only on five. Okay, well, number five. Constantly looking to brag about your wealth and physical prowess, especially on social media. I know a few dudes who define themselves by the amount of money they've made or how they've better how they're better than everyone because they practice a certain martial art. Those guys have tiny dicks. Um because if you are trying because you they think that their fighting skills, their good like their you know, their bodies or like their chiseled abs uh or their wealth they're using that to get laid because they don't have anything else good for them i've seen a lot of guys with ugly faces and they're like i'm just gonna get super ripped and like that's how they get women i mean i guess it works for some guys as long as you're not a dick about it but i know it is funny like you see guys with ugly face getting ripped i'm like oh no you see a guy like flaunting his wealth or whatever um he has a tiny dick. Folks, it's it's simple to find out. Um, people who are... For a man, your dick is everything to you, apparently. And when your dick is normal-sized, like mine, I'm fine to admit it's normal, it's not humongous, and it's not small. Uh, then you don't try to uh, overcompensate for anything. Um, that's just how life works. If you overcompensate for something, like when you have a lifted truck that's really loud... Sonic drive-ins specifically, that's how you know their dick is small. Um, it's not hard to find someone with a small dick. But uh, but ladies, I say I have a normal-sized dick, uh, but when it is soft, it is not impressive, okay? I always want to acknowledge that. I want to be vul- I always want to be, uh, what's, it's not vulnerable, um, transparent. That's what they use at churches, transparent. I want to be transparent with you. My dick's soft. Is not impressive at all. It is the saddest thing in the world. My soft dick is the saddest. Um, but hopefully, um, typically, uh, when you have an unacceptable soft dick, that's not important to women. Uh, it's only important when it's hard. So uh, remember, guys, um, no woman I've ever been with has said that my dick was bad. So they've all been very nice to me about it. At least that. They hurt with my heart. Women hurt your hearts, not your penises. If they hurt your penis, they're going to hurt your heart. <laughs> All right. I'm dragging this. Oh, man. Oh. This, has been a rough, this has been a rough episode. Uh, number six, when he's not supportive of the other men in his life, a truly masculine man loves and supports his brothers and celebrates their achievements. An insecure man brings down, other, brings down to prove he's on top. Now... I make fun of Josh and Mike a lot, but I also love those guys. Um, and I will very much tell you things I like about them. Like I told Josh, even though that was kind of a joke, <laughs> but <laughs> that's that's a different thing. I actually do like Josh, and I wouldn't be making fun of him on a podcast if I didn't love him. And I also love Micah, even though I hate him and fuck him. <laughs> but no, I love that guy. Um, so it's weird. I get mad at him when he like bashes himself. I'm like, are you bashing yourself? I want to let you know. That's my job. And so you need to fuck off with this fucking shit attitude for yourself. Um, Because Mike is my bitch. And he is no one else's bitch but mine. And uh, if you're not supporting your friends, you're just a shit human. Like, you're always trying to bring your friends down. Those aren't friends, buddy. You don't have friends. You're a fucking loser. You don't celebrate your friends. I always try to... My friends do something good. I think... Okay, so we obviously know... um, I make this joke about Josh's book. It's a uh, track and desire, a, uh, a journey after swallowtail kites. So the story behind that is that Josh's book is track and desire, a memoirish walk through faith and shit like that. That's basically the real title. It's on Amazon. It's too long for my taste, but I, but I, I like Josh because he put a long title on his book. Um, but so when he re- when the book like the date it was supposed to be released i wanted to go on amazon take a screenshot and just like send him congratulations congratulations your book's out you know just you know be a good be a good friend cuz i want to let him know he did a good thing and um and then i saw this other book track and desire a journey after swallowtail kites next underneath his book and i'm like i'm going to screenshot that and send it to him <laughs> and so 
that has been an ongoing joke that only I find funny. And um, maybe you do too. Josh might have a, may have giggled a little bit at it, but uh, nevertheless, he persisted. Uh, man, we got to lift up our brothers, for we are men. And apparently, we need to do that. Fellas, is it gay to motivate your friends? <laughs> okay. Number seven, a more subtle one I see is not allowing themselves to enjoy things that are traditionally childish or girly. Not watching TV shows or listening to a certain music because they don't like it is fine. But if the reason is because it's sissy, girly, or not manly, they might as well admit that they think enjoying those things will make them look weak or less masculine. I always, I always kind of want to know, at least like, obviously... I feel like TV gets it. Like this show is made for women. <laughs> like it's clear. It's called Lifetime. They had a whole. They have a whole channel made for it. Like, are you into anything feminine? Uh, come to Lifetime, where men will hurt you. <laughs> and uh, it's it's you know the idea of like not all men. And obviously, you know Shrek would never do that to anyone. But uh, you know it's not all men. But like Lifetime, it's like all men. Um, I do agree with the statement. Not all men. Um, to a point, uh, but if you're a stranger to a woman, she can't trust you. So, um, also let's do it. Let's remember we had that. Oh, we're still doing the ongoing weekly, um, no sexually assaulting a woman challenge. Um, it renews, we do it every week and, uh, every week we decide to not sexually assault a woman. So if you're new to the show and have not joined the don't sexually assault a woman challenge, uh, we would like you to join us in not sexually assaulting women because that is not cool. And uh, so we never – so every week we challenge ourselves. Every week we, we go a full week without sexually assaulting a woman, and then the next week we do the same. So every week is don't sexually assault a woman week, and uh, it's an ongoing thing we're doing here, and it's very cool. We're excited for you. Uh, to join us in the Don't Sexually Assault a Woman uh, challenge. <laughs> like it's a, ch it's a challenge. Um, number eight, making gay jokes. Now, I've been known to make gay jokes, but I make good gay jokes that that are classy. More more or less, actually make, I don't actually make straight jokes. Like, see a gay couple post a picture on Instagram. It's like, you two are such great friends, going to get great girlfriends someday. <laughs> And I'm trying to get all gay people to say, like, no hetero. It's like, yeah, you know, I went to the hardware store, no hetero, instead of, like, no homo. Okay, that's the joke. So um, don't make cheap gay jokes. Make rich gay jokes. Make expensive gay jokes because they'll be funny to even gay people. Um, refusing to moisturize. Dudes with will be red and raw like that's how skin's supposed to be. Now... I know this is a Josh positive episode, um, and I remember one time Josh shamed me for this, but Josh would also like to say that he did not call me gay for doing it. Um, he just disapproved and saw it as girly, but he didn't say gay. Um, but, but that's why I like about Josh, because whatever I just said. Um, um, but no, y'all, men out there, we should be washing our faces. And when we get done washing our faces, you need to use an oil-free moisturizer. I'm not saying you need to spend like $100 on a little bottle of moisturizer. Just get the off-brand Walmart, Kroger, wherever you shop. Just get the off-brand is fine. You just got to moisturize your fucking face. This is, I think this is more of a white people problem because uh, I know with black people, um, if they don't moisturize, it shows. And... I know um, you you can see that. It just doesn't show on white people. That's why you always need a black person in your life to tell you to use moisturizer. Moisturizer is not gay, folks. I don't know wh how we got to this point. Fellas, is uh, taking care of the biggest organ on your body gay? Skin is the largest organ on our bodies. And um, we need to start taking fucking care of that. So, um, that's another rant, but remember, Josh said that he did not say it was gay, so just let him know that. 
So um, just let everyone – I just want to make that public record that Josh did not say using moisturizer is gay. He he very much texted me uh, to not say, to say that he did not call moisturizer gay. So um, – and I believe – I'll let him have that because it's a Josh positive episode. Um, number 10, if their Nissan Micra sounds like it will rip a hole in the fabric of the universe whenever they accelerate because of the mods that do nothing other than increase volume. Like I said, small penis problems. Um, normal pe- penis guys like myself – do not have that problem. Would do not think about doing that stuff. You know why? Because our normal pieces penises keep us company. That's just how life is. Um, number eleven. Uh, trying to dominate a conversation or activity for no reason, being needlessly competitive. Um, I mean, I've been competitive. I'm really only like that with Micah. Always dominates the conversation. God, I remember one fucking time we were, I don't know, we had a friend who lived in, like, a really nice apartment complex in college, and uh, they had, like, a pool and hot tub, and so we were, like, sitting in a hot tub with a bunch of, like, frat guys and shit like that. I'm like, what's up? I'm, I'm Sam. I'm a, I'm a music major, and uh, I'm kind of, oh, no, I remember that night. I was not funny at all. <laughs> no one thought it was funny at all. Oh, do you, do you ever just... Like I generally think I'm a funny guy, but like you have to, I, I I always make sure to like read the room whenever I try to be funny. Like just kind of like understand who I'm playing, like who I'm dealing with. Like understanding someone's sense of humor. And if someone doesn't have a sense of humor, please get out of my life immediately because I don't want to hang out with you. You are not fun. Um, but I was just like trying to make jokes, and they were like, "Oh," I was like, "Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> you do not think I'm funny at all." And so, um, one thing I've learned is, um, that was a rough night, but then Micah was talking to some chick, and I don't know if he was trying to get in her pants or sell her a book, but he, like, literally talked for an hour straight, like, we were waiting on him, it was literally, I literally think it was an hour, and he talked, and this girl was not talking, she was just nodding, and he was just fucking talking about his book for an hour straight, and, um, I believe that was in 2013, and I still bring that up to this day. Like, Mike, you're just gonna talk someone's ear off. And, uh, I don't think Mike is the same person anymore. So it's kind of a shitty thing to be comparing someone from, like, a person they used to be. <laughs> but it's Micah, and I love the guy. But also fuck him. Um, always, number 12, always finding to be right no matter what, even if someone obviously knows what they are talking about. Um, sounds like issues I shouldn't bring up, but yeah, some of those guys are annoying. Uh, number 13, if his view on what makes a man a man is narrow in his mind, they are only two or three types of men, and other types are wrong. You go back to church camp, and I remember hearing uh, one of the pastors say, you know, Jesus was one of the manliest men of all, and that's why we should try to be like him. Like, that's kind of cool. You're like, Jesus was a cool dude. Like, you know, you talk shit on the Bible all you want. Jesus was a cool dude. Like, Jesus was, like, probably the only cool dude in the Bible. Yeah, I would say that. Paul was kind of a bitch. Um, he's like, you know, I wish everyone could be single like me. Buddy, you're probably just fucking ugly. Um, so, yeah, um, your idea of what a man should be is, like, if you have a beard and you don't go fishing, you're not a real man. I'm like, what the fuck did he just say? You have facial hair and uh, you don't fish? You're not a real man. All right. Um, sounds like you aren't a real man. Um, it sounds like your dick is small, so miss me with your bullshit. Um, number 14, guys who talk shit about women who speak up or needlessly call them names. Yeah, there's, there's a little thing to the, I, I like this, I like this topic. Um, I don't agree with it, no. <laughs> but there is a thing, like, when you think about, like, women who are gonna be, like, successful in the world, like, m- we, men tend tend to call them a bitch uh for getting who get a woman who gets things done you know and like leadership and shit like that we tend to call her a bitch but men are literally doing the same thing um so i i mean yeah i know i totally agree with the statement that like these people talk shit on women like you know slut shaming like 
go to that idea of like a man's a key and a woman's a lock. Like if you a key that opens a lot of locks is a good key, but a lock that uh, lets a lot of keys open in is a shitty lock. Like that's so fucking stupid. Um, I don't know. I think I always try to treat women. I can easily do it with music, and I'm trying to like adjust myself because I grew up Christian and we didn't treat women right. Um, I'm trying to like readjust my brain to. No, I can do it with music, but for some reason, like, I need to, like, uh, rewire some things everywhere else in life. And then Micah says I disrespect women because I didn't, I didn't, uh, fix toxic masculinity. And, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this now. We're halfway through this list. Um, I'm not gonna fix toxic masculinity. I'm only here to entertain you all (laughs) and talk shit on people I disagree with. All right, so number 15, guys who are uncomfortable being close emotionally or physically to other men in fear of being gay or emasculated. I want to know what you mean by physically. Physically, like, uh, I want to cuddle my male friends. Um, That is gay. So anything slight that could be considered sexual physically is gay. And not that there's anything wrong with that, as Seinfeld is... So nicely pointed out. Um, emotionally, no, you can me. That's okay. Be emotionally with your friends. You got to be emotional with your friends. Fellas, is it gay? Talk about your feelings with your friends. Um, physically, we got to define that because um, it could be gay and still good gay. Because if it's foreplay, as you know, I'm the king. Uh, foreplay with another man is still gay. So, so all right, number 16, I disagree with a guy on a political issue, and he immediately called me a beta. So, yeah, pretty clear cut there. Yep, um, if you use the terms alpha and beta, you're a beta, and you probably have a tiny penis. That's pretty, pretty obvious, um, but you know that shit. Um, we're 24 episodes into this show. We know what's going on. Uh, uh, so, mm. Here we go. Number 17, I have something to say about that. Refusing to drink any non-manly drink. Mentioning how big his dick is, it isn't. Thinking sports knowledge is a personality trait. All right, let's let's go backwards here. Um, Sports knowledge um, is like my music knowledge. It's not a personality trait. It's an interest. It's something that you like. Um, And also, no, uh, no woman... Not a lot of women want to know about your sports. That's why I get so annoyed. I'm like, I'm one of those guys who doesn't like sports. I just, I get so, like, I can't, I'm so worried about having kids and them wanting to do, like, sports and shit like that. I can barely sit through a game of football, like NFL football, like professionals, like, doing professional sports. I can barely sit through that. I cannot imagine watching a fucking child play football or baseball. I cannot imagine it. it. And my friend's like, just drink at the game. Like, I can't always be fucking drinking all the time, folks. Do not mention this podcast. Um, so, sports are just an interest. There's either sport guys or video game guys. I like being a video game guy. Because, guess what? You can get a girl to like video games, too. It's called... Um, Trying to spend quality time with someone. And that's what I made my friend do, who has a girlfriend that he likes hanging out with. Just like, why don't she play with us? That's how you make friends, folks. Um, Then we got mentioning how big his dick is. Um, Yeah, if you're bragging about your dick size, it's probably not. Um, Because, one, I'm a big believer. It only matters how big it is hard. And if you're bragging about your hard dick to other men... Yeah, you pro- your masculinity is probably fucking a finger tap away from breaking. And then refusing to drink any non-manly drink. Now, I may have already told this story, but one time with a girl I was interested in, I guess we were drinking at a bar or something like that, I ordered a gin and tonic, which, um, as a normal person would know, is a very gender-neutral drink uh, because it's gin Tonic water and probably some lime. Like it's a very, I would say it's a gender neutral drink. A very, I would also say very classy drink. If you order a gin and tonic, 
Um, that's a very easy one. Every bar has it. And uh, very, it's a very simple drink and all that shit. Um, this girl who had the hots for Shweezy was like, I can't believe. It. I'm like, what are you drinking? And the gin tonic? I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, what the fuck are you trying to say right now to me about a gin and tonic? That is not a girly drink. Um, that's that was also weird. Manly drinks. I don't know. Dude, cocktails are good. Shut the fuck up about alcohol. Do not shit on alcohol. I once I was also once shamed for drinking wine. Like, look, now most men aren't like very big. Like, wine has typically has gotten like the women treatment, but guys will drink it with women. Like, it's not a big deal. Let's stop talking shit on wine. Let's stop putting gender terms on alcohol. Thank you. Uh, it's like women don't like beer because it's not sweet and fruity shit. And shut the fuck up. Um, number 18, putting nuts on the trucks probably. Yep, that's fragile. We're moving on from that. We, I don't think I need to discuss that. Truck nuts. Um, number 19, the worst are guys who use hashtags on Instagram like hashtag real men. Man, hashtag real men. Hashtag real men have beers. Hashtag manly. Hashtag man. Hashtag men. Hashtag alpha male. Hashtag intelligent. Hashtag smart, etc. I'm like, dude, I've never seen a confident masculine man ever once you shit like that. If you have to tell the world you're a real man or how intelligent or alpha you are, you aren't. A very good concept. If you have to explain something to someone, uh, you're probably not that thing. Um, I guess I would say I'm a musician, but also, um, why would I say I'm a musician when I could just pick up a guitar and play for you? Some shit. My nose it just again. Um, just like that. And then when people say, I'm not racist, but, um, yeah, you probably are slightly racist, maybe like diet racist. Like you don't think black people are less than white people, but also you don't want to be around a black person, which is a problem. Um, and that's how I think number 20, worrying about honor and fighting over it. I've never been in a fight. 99% of my friends have never been in a fight. None of my colleagues have ever been in a fight yet. You come across these fuckwits who seem to think that it's normal. Quite often, they complain about it. Oh, I can barely leave my house without someone starting shit in every single scenario. It is them who is the problem. Now, a lot of thoughts here. My nose still itches. Why the fuck does my nose itch? Um, yeah, I don't get into a lot of situations where I need to fight someone. Um, Micah used to say things when we go out. Uh, if we get into a fight, you got my back. And I would always say, why the hell are we starting a fight? And that's kind of what I would say. I had to tell him recently, like, remember when you did ask me that uh, if we got into a fight, you got my back? And I never said these words like, yeah, I got your back. Well, I always did. Ride or die, bitch. Also, my EP out now on all your um, streaming services. God damn it, my nose itches. Why does it always itch when I fucking do this show? Um, so, yeah, people who... I don't know. Like I've I've talked about people with like anger issues, like who just angry and hostile super quickly. Just like stay the fuck away from me because I don't like you. I'm like Jesus. Like, like I don't know. It's like you're. I don't know. You're fucking. You got charged like five cents on like your electric bill. Just shut the fuck up. No one likes you. Um, Number 21, we're almost, we're almost done with this, folks. Aggression and violence. Many insecure men use tactics of intimidation or just plain old violence because they feel attacked by everything. Can't discuss things like a normal grown-up and feel like it proves they are a real man. Um, yeah, I think I just said that topic before. People who just get a very aggressive and violent, like, super quickly, just like... I, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's going to be some past shit I have to get over, but that's the way it is. Yeah, you know what the fuck I think about that. Thinking he's cool for hating cats. Now, folks, I, I'm a big animal fan. Obviously, I have an Airbud poster in my home. Um, I've been thinking about getting a cat. I love dogs, too. Just, you know, I like animals. I'm not like an animal freak, but I enjoy animals. If you've listened to any relationship advice I give, and the, the question is, my girlfriend wants me to get rid of my dog. Um, I always answer with, uh, maybe you should get rid of the girlfriend because the dog is better. And um, 
dogs are pure. Most of them. Some of them are dicks. Um, but like hating cats, cats are great, folks. We need to talk about cats. People who are like, I fucking hate cats. Or I'm like, look, dogs love your attention. But cats, you earn a cat's affection. And if you've never earned a cat's affection, um, you're a shitty person because you can't, because dogs give love, but cats, you earn love. And that's why cats are great. And I will always love a cat for everything they are. Except when they scratch me, then I don't like them. I, oh man, I think I'm, I want to adopt a cat. Maybe I should adopt a cat. Um, big thing though, I, like, I do obviously want to adopt. I kind of want to get a black cat because those are like always so um, hated at animal shelters, you know, like animal shelters and stuff like that. There was like a music kitty cafe in Nashville. It's a joke on music city cafe. And I went there once and uh, there was one cat that like, so we were like checking in, I guess at the front counter and like there was a cat that jumped on me, like jumped on my shoulder. And usually the cats don't do that. Cause like you can pet them, but they are like, do not pick up the cats. That was like a rule there. So the cat like jumped on me and uh, I was like, you know, like when you, I feel like when you adopt an animal, like the pet chooses you, you don't choose the pet. That's kind of how I feel. And I'm just worried I won't get that situation. Anyways, though, uh, shut the fuck up if you hate cats. Cats are cool. Uh, dogs are cool too. You can like, you can like one over the other. Like I'd rather have a dog. I don't think I really want to have a cat, but like some people are like, I have three dogs, but like keep a cat around the cat. Cat will keep the dogs in check. Um, oh, and don't get me started. If I, if you find a video of a cat and a dog becoming a best friend, um, that'll, that'll make me humble. That'll make me happy. Um, or a dog and a baby. Those, those make me happy too. Okay. Number 23. We're almost done folks. Chill out. Just being loud in general, saying he doesn't care what anyone says or thinks about him, but in reality seeks validation and attention from other people all the time. This sounds like me. Um, this sounds like me. Um, I mean, I don't really give a shit what people say about me. It's just kind of like, I'm, I speak loudly. I think that's no, just me personally. And I used to get in trouble for talking really loud and talking too much. Shit, that, I think I talked about this on another show, but if I ever, if I have a child, if I make a child or uh, get a rescue or whatever, um, and their teacher puts down, like, on, like, my child's report card, uh, talks too much on their report card. They put talks too much on their report card. If it's just, like, unless they're, like, disrupting class or something like that. Um, the teacher, teacher needs to fucking learn how to fucking tell kids, hey, don't disrupt class. Um, if they, they tell me my child talks too much. I am going to the school. I, I don't care if I have a wife or whatever. Uh, I'll do go this solo. I'm going to school, and I'm having a meeting with the principal and the teacher because that is unacceptable. Talking too much is a good thing. That's how people become podcast hosts, become radio hosts, and a lot of women. It's also very demeaning to a lot of women out there. To be like this ch- your child talks too much. Like never do that is not have anything to do with my child's education. You putting down that my child talks too much. It's so fucking stupid. My ch- that means your my child probably has talents that's going to natural talents that's going to help them in their future. So I would, ne- if, I don't encourage everyone here. If you're, if you have a child, you you got a rescue or whatever, and the teacher puts down talks too much, have a meeting with them and their boss because that is that is unacceptable. That is not educational. That is not an educational thing. That is a teacher uh, talking shit on your child, and you should not let teachers talk shit on your children. Uh, obviously, there's ideas like why is my child failing, and it's like oh the teacher's fault or your child isn't studying. That's like you know there's there's debatable ones, but if your teacher's putting down child talks too much, talk to them and their boss. Be like so this teacher is not talking well to my child, and this is very unacceptable. So um, that is nothing with this point. Um, we're talking about guys who are douchebags, <laughs> and uh, god damn it, my nose itches. Um, we're talking about guys who are douchebags and are. Just obnoxious for no reason. I've been obnoxious. Um, but anyways, now let's move on to 24. Um, compulsive cheating. you got to have really low self-esteem and self-respect to seek validation from others in that ma- manner. Ch- I Yeah, definitely agree. And um, that's why I also hate 
poly people, which apparently uh, I'm wrong about poly people. But also at the same time, um, unless both people are good with it, most of the time someone's going to get hurt. And just maybe talk to a merit. Maybe just befriend a marriage counselor and just ask them in general. Like, so couples who decide to have like an open relationship or marriage, how does that work out? Someone gets hurt. That's how it works out. That's how it ends. That's always how it ends. Someone gets hurt. Um, Typically the person who did not bring up, let's have an open relationship. That's the person who gets hurt. So now let's get to the uh, last one here. If they think a beard equals a personality, Micah, did you write this? (laughs) Is this Micah? No, Micah has an actual personality. The woke guy. I'm trying to make sure he doesn't become the fake woke that I talk about on the show a lot. So I'm making sure he does not become a member of the fake woke. We all have to push Micah against the fake woke and just make him real woke or schwoke. So... Yeah, um, if people who are like, it's like people who think uh, craft beer is a personality or sports are a personality. I'm like, it's not. It's not a personality. It's an interest. Uh, You can have interests, but it's not your personality. I like music, yet um, every conversation does not need to be about music. That's what I've learned. And uh, a beer is not a personality. And neither is craft beer. And... I'm going to leave it at that. What's going on, my fellow Schwokelord? Hope you enjoyed that highlight from one of the great shows that I make. Uh, If you want to watch more clips or even full episodes, go check them out over here and down below and everywhere else. Uh, Stay awesome.